So, in the last video, I talked about how Zimbabweans are like orphans. Sometimes I really had to be correct because we truly are. Have you ever seen how after the funeral of the last surviving parent, when you're now parentless, you are treated by your relatives? You're tossed around. Everyone wants to avoid being responsible for you because they can tell that there's no one to report to. That uncle who had three of his orphans, now we have to send him to the rural areas with the grannies. And they don't even want the grannies anymore unless if they want you to do some basic work at home. That's exactly how the Zimbabweans feel wherever they go. In fact, you're just a little orphan and you're eating our plates anyway. That's us. Now, the cases of people who are dying during their sleep or people who are admitted because of depression are slowly becoming a big challenge in the UK. Last week, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who was talking about how a certain gentleman just collapsed and then he went to be with the Lord. And that was it. Such cases are not coming from just nothing. They're coming from a lot of pressure and having to invest a lot of money to come to to get to a different country only to see that all the glitter and the glamorous life that you see on television is not real so a lot of Zimbabweans have left the country because it's unbearable for them their leaders are going on television claiming surpluses and sufficient grains in the granaries while they cannot see the goodies they talk about so in fact most of the people in Zimbabwe are just wearing nice smiles but deep inside, it's a lot of pain. I read comments, of course, that come. I always do, and I make sure that each and every person I respond to. And I see a lot of people saying, I don't know why most people from the diaspora, like people from abroad, are always involved in the issues to do with Zimbabwe. And I beg to differ with those who say that. It looks like we have a certain sect of our society that thinks that if you are living abroad, you are not supposed to have any saying of what happens in the country because they say, come and let us do things together. Fine. You know, every struggle is defined by certain people. Some people have been contributing money to even the triple C and they are from abroad because alone is people who are local in Zimbabwe. And to be quite honest with you, many people are sustained in Zimbabwe due to remittances that are sent back home. So these people are people who are fighting their own battles. And if you have to judge them based on how much they're not contributing physically, then the country is going to collapse at the end of the day. So please just be gentle with the diaspora. Just a piece of advice. The Zimbabweans are really facing their own problems, especially these um, certificate of sponsorship people that have been brought into the UK. They have a lot of vicissitudes of problems that we need to explore. But you have to understand that most of the people that are going to the UK, to South Africa, wherever they're going, there are people who have degrees upon degrees. Some of them are educated. Some of them are, you know, former lawyers or some are former doctors who are willing to go as low as becoming carers. So sometimes what they offer you is not what you deserve but you still stay and they know you will stay because home is worse than any other place home is even worse than hell itself so don't be angry with the people from abroad let's work together and assist in bringing the best out of our country in today's episode i want to talk about the uk government making it hard for zimbabwean drivers to drive in the uk as most of the drivers are facing challenges and the UK government is saying the Zimbabwean government is not cooperating. I will talk about the general life, of course, of the people from Zimbabwe in the UK so that I'll make it simple for everyone to understand what's happening. So we need to understand that um, there are certain institutions that I'm going to mention. And we have the first institution in Zimbabwe called the Central Vehicle Registry, CVR which issues and assigns licenses in Zimbabwe. And CVR used to assist the Zimbabwean people with what we call certificate of competency, which are blue papers that are given and they represent 
your license. But in a normal country with normal policies, this paper was supposed to be issued only to be lasting 30 days. But now most of the drivers, if you tell me right now, most of the drivers have been using certificate of, of um, competency for years right now because our country is unable to produce enough metal licenses. However, like most of the Zimbabwean folktales, the state of things always end with said outcomes. So the CVR is now issuing the metal license discs in months, if not years. Actually, they never do anymore. So for you to get a metal disc, you have to use, you know how it is in Zimbabwe, you have to use your backhand for you to pay to get the metal disc. So if you've watched this video to this point, please just like and just say something, comment and also subscribe. I know we might be getting along by now. Due to the economic hardships in Zimbabwe, we saw a sharp curve of thousands upon thousands of Zimbabweans who moved to the UK to work as carers since there was a shortage of workers in the UK. Anyway, I've done a long video about this. So Zimbabwe being a former colony of the UK, it's one of the countries that are allowed to have its citizens drive within the UK without having to undertake a test for a year only. And then after that period, you have to convert your Zimbabwean license into a UK full driving license. Now, the job that most of these Zimbabweans do, they'll be doing what they call home care, where you drive around people's homes, doing different types of home tasks. So this means you need a license. But however, the quality of driver's licenses from Zimbabwe was kind of um, worrisome and the quality of the metal disc was so hard for you to even realize or to see the person who is the holder of the license so we saw a surging number of driving related fines by africans not only zimbabweans but a lot of africans were having a lot of driving fines within the roads and the uk regulatory board is called the driver's vehicle licensing authority dvla looked at the classroom and said okay how many orphans do we have and obviously with substandard disc plates and pretty much hard experience when it came to our vehicle confidence you know the uk roads are so complicated well they call them motorways so driving in the uk and you're just coming from kambuzuma or you're coming from glenora it's so hard for you to get into the UK and you find your way out to navigate through the streets of the UK. So most of these people would end up in ditches. Most of these people would end up hitting people's cars. And this brought so much scrutiny when it came to Zimbabwean licenses. So the UK was like, I think we need to really look at the type of the drivers and also the quality of the drivers. So many Zimbabweans got this letter from DVLA saying um, the application is returned to you because of you know following reasons your Zimbabwean license does not meet required criteria by the CVR in Zimbabwe and we're experiencing difficulties in obtaining um, driving license entitlement confirmation from Zimbabwe so you see this this is a regulatory board that regulates the drivers in the UK trying to reach out to a Zimbabwean regulatory board that is supposed to produce confirmation of Zimbabwean drivers to see if they are roadworthy, if they are able to drive a lot. But then let's take you back to Zimbabwe. How do these people pass the tests? Most of them are into shady deals in getting these licenses. And most of them actually are giving these licenses sometimes. And then next thing is you're expected to just drop into a car in the UK and drive. And with such weak institutions, the UK government, because it's strict on its rules, it had to stop and say, you know what, listen, we need to really look at the quality of drivers in Zimbabwe or from Zimbabwe. So they would say to process your application, you need to obtain original copy of your certificate of competency before an exchange can be considered. Follow me. So they had to review and they realized that most of the Zimbabweans who were coming 
in the numbers a certain type of a license called a class 2 license which in Zimbabwe is used by those who are aspiring to become truck drivers hence they said no more class 2 licenses and here is where all the problem started so if you know very well people who get to the uk through this certificate of sponsorship program through this carers program they'll go and get class 2 licenses because they're quite easy to do they don't have three point tens they don't have parallel parking they're like so easy to come by so at the end of the day these people had to resort to getting class 2 licenses because they want to go masinya masinya faster faster chop chop they want to go to the uk and meet the land of the king but then sadly it's not that easy anymore so in zimbabwe you're able to drive a small car with the class 2 but if you're in the uk you have to take a new license and you know how much it costs for you to take a lesson in the uk that's like 30 pounds to 50 pounds a lesson which is approximately during i mean this rate might be somewhere around 37 us dollars to 61 us dollars per lesson not the five dollars that you pay in a normal zimbabwe here so for someone who has just arrived in the uk that's a lot of money to think of and the other reason why they stopped issuing these licenses is that they discovered that the licenses coming from Zimbabwe were fake. So to avoid this, they requested that everyone intending to convert their license, they had to produce the blue certificate of competence because the document cannot be forged at least. So obviously because the Zimbabweans think they have parents back home called the government, they had to inquire back home. But then you guys say we can drive anywhere in the world and also you said we can also drive in the uk what's this now then this is what our favorite uncles responded on x which used to be called twitter the minister of transport and infrastructural development has noted with concern that the several messages circulating on social media with regards to challenges first on conversion of the zimbabwean driver's license to british license this article attempts to answer some of the questions that zimbabwean drivers are faced with. is the british government still recognizing the zimbabwean license yes they do but there are unconfirmed reports that some zimbabweans have been using fake metal driver's licenses and sadly they end up being involved and causing road traffic accidents. This has led to the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency, a DVLA in the United Kingdom, to demand certificate of competency upon request for conversion of the Zimbabwean license to a British license. Number two, I have lost my certificate of competency and it's a requirement for the conversion of a license. Can I get a duplicate certificate? The answer is the current system does not have provision for a duplicate certificate of competency considering that at law it is only valid for 30 days. However, the ministry is in process of engaging DVLA so that they do not request for a certificate of competence upon request for conversion for a driver's license. Number three, I have passed class two driver's license and I was awarded class two four and five dvla is refusing to convert my license to allow me to drive class four and five they want me to drive class two only is it possible that i can downgrade most drivers who were tested for class two did not go through parallel parking and three point turn test dvla has concerns that they may have inadequate skills the ministry has made provision that the members must be tested for class four so that they are certified competent for the required skills in the relevant class. Number four, I submitted an application requesting for a conversion of my license to DVLA and I was initially rejected on the basis that I should attach the certificate of competence. Is it okay if I can get similar one, not from VID because I lost the original? The government answered and said it is not allowed to present a fake certificate of competence. I think this person honestly this person was literally asking the government if they can fake a document um so he said um it is not allowed to present fake certificate of competency to dvla or any licensing authority applicants risk losing their valid driver's licenses drivers are requested to follow correct channels of having the license converted without engaging in illicit 
behavior. Five, DVLA is failing to conduct CVR. How can this, how can we be assisted if you want our licenses verified? VR is in touch with DVLA on daily basis. The current emails to conduct are blah, 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 blah. Now, this is something that you need to understand. I want you to understand this. So, a friend of mine called the DVLA, which is the UK board. They called them to ask if their license is going to be sent back. And do you know what they say? They say, we have been waiting for the Zimbabwean government to act on this, but they are not cooperating. These were the real words that came from the UK regulatory body. So now, that's something. But I think before, before that, I think I saw something very interesting. Did you see that this is a whole ministry that is using a Gmail account? And this account, this ministry is given a budget and they're using Gmail, honestly. To set up a budget allocation that doesn't cater for a simple professional email, do they need like sanctions to be lifted for them to create a normal email? Again, policy is forever dynamic. It's not static. This thing of sticking to Rhodesian systems must be an indication of how some people are sleeping on duty in the Ministry of Transport. How do we justify the use of these old systems when the world has moved on to the new improved plastic systems of licenses? Now we have seen the world moving to 3D printing, advanced systems that are supposed to be, you know, embraced by countries like Zimbabwe, but still we're stuck in Rhodesian ways. And we have people who are using nice cars when they cannot afford just a simple printer for plastic licenses just to design a license and then you issue it out to the people imagine having to change a license to a new one because sadak has intervened now you see um we have a new license that is now being introduced from the minister of transport but then the license is actually a regional license for sadak countries this really shows that we are in trouble so it's a matter of time we face it we get to this point because of people who are meant to be working hard to better our lives. People are going to the UK, to the same people that you chased and said, you know what, we want to rule our country on our own. And when we rule our country, we're going to make sure that we give people back the land. And when you give back the land, you give people the resources to take charge of the resources. But then these resources are just enjoyed by one family. They're sharing it amongst themselves. It's just a clique of people who are just doing things to satisfy themselves. Now, Zimbabweans are scattered all over the world and this is sad. Anyway, till next time, my name is Tavada Simon. Please don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like this video. Until next time, much love.